Jack Jones joins Murph tonight at midnight. It's 11 o'clock. Do you know where your children are? This is Eyewitness News Nightcast. Now, with Western New York's number one newscast, here with Ann Edwards is Irv Weinstein. Coming Eyewitness News Nightcast, a local nursing school is not long for this world. Eyewitness News has learned that officials at Buffalo General Hospital have decided to phase out the nursing school at the facility. A formal announcement is expected to be made tomorrow that the school will be closed following an 18-month phase-out period. The nursing students we talked to tonight were depressed the by the news. We had a meeting today, and a few of them would come out, and they wouldn't really say anything to us, but we know that the school is going to be closed sooner or later. But we just don't know when right now. It doesn't look good. Looks like I'll be gone here in May and wondering what I'm going to do in September. Sources tell Eyewitness News the hospital is facing big budget cuts, and that led to the phase-out. A controversy of a different kind over at the University of Buffalo tonight. The question, should campus security guards be armed? Dan Housley has a story from UB. October 21st, 18-year-old Craig Allen is stabbed to death on UB's Amherst campus. Less than two months later, a student is seriously injured in a stabbing at Buff State. Public safety officers on New York State campuses want more muscle to deal with crime. Many think giving the officers guns would be a good start. They're in fear for their own safety. The fact is they don't want to become uh, victims of a crime themselves. They don't want to be stabbed, shot, or beat up. These men go through the same training as Buffalo police officers. But presently, only three of New York's 28 state campuses allow their officers to carry guns. The decision on whether or not to arm campus police is up to UB President Stephen Samples. He tells us tonight he sees no reason to change a long-standing tradition of keeping guns off campus. Sample says he might change his mind if a majority of students or teachers wanted the officers to have guns. Many of the students we talked to said they'd like the idea. With the subway coming through in the other year, in another six months, that uh, I think the public say they should be able to carry guns. I think they do an uh, admirable job. I think in some instances they may need to go into an area where there are armed students and they may need a gun. The officers say they know traditions take time to change, but they're willing to keep up the fight. In Buffalo, Dan Housley, Channel 7 Eyewitness News, Nightcast. Erie County lawmen scored another victory today in their battle to bust up a major cocaine operation in western New York. Authorities swooped down on four Buffalo homes and confiscated guns, a pound of coke worth $100,000, and $465,000 in cash. They also arrested Enzo Volpe of Richmond Avenue. DA Richard Arcaris says it's the culmination of a 14-month probe of area coke trafficking in western New York. A major uh, distribution center, uh, we're talking about over a million four hundred thousand dollars that have been seized in the last two months alone. So far, three arrests have been made with more than 20 arrests expected before the probe is over. Erie County authorities tell Eyewitness News that they have questioned a key accomplice of confessed mass murderer Henley Lee Lucas. The talks with Otis Toole are in attempt to further corroborate what has been learned from Lucas about a series of unsolved Western New York murders. Last fall, Lucas, a former Buffalo area resident, told law enforcement officials he murdered 54 New York State residents, including three in Erie County. In Newark, New Jersey, authorities say a 46-year-old school employee who allegedly solicited sex from boys jumped 21 stories to his death as police tried to arrest him. And now the story of an almost perfect crime. Almost perfect. Save the fact that 19-year-old Montgomery Weeks was caught. The Orlando, Florida teenager with an IQ of 147 has been found guilty of plotting to kill his father in 1983 by filling his water glass with a colorless poison. And from New York City tonight, more news on Bernhard Getz. You may know him better as the subway gunman.